Welcome to the Tudor Dixon Podcast. I'm Tudor Dixon, and I'm glad you're joining me today. Today, we're talking about something interesting, I think. Online ordering. You probably get sucked into ordering your products online or your clothing clothing online, which you pretty much have to these days, because if you're going to buy anything, it's got to be online. And this is hard for me, I have to admit. I am a mall girl. I grew up going to the mall. The mall when I was a kid was actually more than just going to buy things. It was a social place. Like You went to the mall to see boys, to talk to friends, to just hang out. And so I'm really kind of sad that the mall doesn't exist anymore. And I'm terrible at online ordering, especially clothes. One time I had to have a suit. So I wanted a suit that was more of a, a dress that could have like a suit with a skirt, right? So I went on Amazon and I found this, what I thought was the perfect business suit to wear to something that I had to go to the day it was coming to my house. You all know what this is like, I'm sure. I'm not the only person that last minute buys, but I am like a habitual last minute purchaser. And that's why another reason I like the mall, you can try your stuff on. So I found the suit. It looked great. Online, it looked great. It comes to my house and I swear it was a suit coat that was attached to the, the whole outfit was like a costume of a suit. It was the shirt was a part of the suit coat and the skirt was a part of the entire suit. And it was made out of this like heavy swimsuit material. So it was almost like I could go to a business meeting and then swim afterward. Like I was sort of like a business person hero, like a superhero business person, but it was completely awful and it looked terrible. So I need help from my guests today, not just for that, but also to find the right places to buy my products. Because as you've probably also noticed anymore, the businesses that you're used to buying from, they no longer really represent you. I mean, it's hard to find places to even take my daughters where they can see someone that they look up to or that they think they might look like one day because no longer do they advertise to women or men and it's become a challenge. So my guests today, they have a solution for that. It is the Public Square, Public Square founder and CEO, Michael Seifert and Columbia Acquisition Corporation chairman and CEO, Omid Malik. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Help me with this online purchasing stuff because I'm really, really bad at it. Well, I don't know if we sell swimsuit businesses, <laughs> but uh, that will certainly add that to the roster. Uh, <laughs> no, don't. It's terrible. <laughs> we, I've never heard of that apparel choice, but I, um, I can tell you that if you're looking for a very quality suit, if you're looking for a very quality swimsuit, we have both of those things. And you know what's cool, Tudor? First of all, thank you so much for having us on. Secondly, we are driven by a desire to meet the needs of consumers for their simple everyday household items or getting a new suit, getting a nice pair of pants, whatever you're looking for, but with one important facet of every transaction. We want to ensure that if you love your country and if you love truth and reason, and if you love family values, that you have a marketplace that can serve you in your purchases. Meaning today, if you go into Target or if you go to any of these major retailers and you look to buy a suit, you look to buy a pair of clothing, whatever you're looking for, they are going to lecture you about things like gender ideology, about political views. And it's become way too much. We're seeing this with Bud Light. We're seeing it with Nike. We're seeing it with Lululemon. And it's very hard today to find a source of quality products that refuse to lecture you about these things in the purchasing of their products. So what we've decided to do is create the nation's largest marketplace of lots of different storefronts and businesses that are all 50,000 plus actually, that are all driven toward a common purpose to provide quality products and services that align with the values that have made this country so special in the first place so that you can know with a blessed assurance that you're not funding companies that are acting antithetically to the United States. And so that's what we've done at Public Square. If that is the plan and people know that's the plan and these companies know that's the plan on the Public Square, is it hard to find companies to join? Because I, I mean, I feel like it's been such a major attack against conservative values, but also this is just, it's pushed in our faces constantly. It's not about the product anymore. 
It's about whether or not you align with this ideology of the company. So how do you find companies that say, yeah, I want to be associated with conservatives? Because that's also seemingly a dirty word now. I, I mean, we've been talking to other folks about the deplatforming that conservatives go through when you're a conservative co company. You can be kicked out of your bank. You can be kicked out of your online purchasing system. It's really hard to openly admit you have those values. How do you find folks? So so, Tudor, I'll just say that what you just described is the reason why I wanted to take this company public. You hit the nail on the head. I actually think that we've seen like an infringement of liberty at the political level is what's happening in certain states and obviously at this federal government. But it's now expanded to exactly what you're saying. You're seeing purportedly private companies violate our constitutional protections constantly, whether it's around speech or even our ability to conduct commerce. You know, as you said, conservatives are losing their bank accounts. They're being fined by payment processors. That was the angle as a financier that I looked at it at and said, this is a huge, huge problem. We can continue to have free states, but if we can't conduct commerce, we're not actually free. And the last part of it is I actually think their intent is to have it much more like China, where you have social credit scores. If you don't behave right. appropriately in that country, you can't get insurance. You can't get a bank account. And I definitely think this is where it's headed. So what you have just set up is exactly why it is an absolute duty for people who believe in the Bill of Rights to support companies like Public Square. So this is more than just a business transaction. It is definitely that. And we're really excited to take it public and allow regular Americans to own the stock because we don't have a lot of public companies listed that support us, as you just pointed out. But it's also a way to insulate ourselves from the affront that you started to describe. We can only be free if we start putting ourselves out there in the private marketplace as well. We've ceded the private space to the other side entirely. They control all the big tech companies that now run our lives. I would equate it for students of history to how the railroads used to be. They used to be controlled by just a few oligarchs, and then you finally had to have them busted up. The modern day railroads are basically big tech and all of these businesses that control our daily lives, and we're nowhere. Now that said, here's the hopeful part. There's over 100 million of us in this country. So there's a lot of us. And we basically quantified that as the third largest economy by GDP. And no one's selling to them. So think about that. The third largest country by GDP of, of an economy is right here in America. And it's red America. And so it's a huge opportunity. And so I'll turn it over to Michael to talk about how he's finding all these businesses, by the way, many of which are medium and small size businesses that were destroyed yeah. during the COVID lockdowns. So this is another way to stop that wealth transfer that took place in our country to big tech during the lockdowns and give it back to the people, the middle class. Yeah, Tudor, we certainly appreciate your stance during the COVID season of making sure that everyone knew that they were essential. Everyone is essential. Everybody's job right. is essential. And what happened, the corrupt actions of our federal government and many state governments around the country to start categorizing our economy based upon essential and non-essential businesses uh, was It was one of the greatest crimes against humanity I've witnessed in a long time because what it did is it made this sort of fascist oligarchic society emerge where if you're a business and you are willing to parrot the message of the government, you'll receive special favors. So you had some businesses that were willing to do what the government would say and they were deemed essential. But if you had a business that spoke out too much or wanted to honor the freedoms of their consumers, they were deemed not essential, even though they were providing the same services. We got our start during COVID. COVID. That season was really inspirational for us to start this company because while we have witnessed corporate America going largely uh, hyper progressive over the last decade, COVID was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back for us. What we have learned, and this is really to the heart of your question, is that when we took a chance with this company, believing that there would be this market that was ready for us and a group of consumers that were hungry enough to spend their money on the platform of their values, it was sort of a question mark as to how receptive will businesses be? I have been blown away. My expectations have been blown out of the water. Every single day, we are seeing hundreds of new business vendors sign up from all different industries. If you're looking for a bank, healthcare institutions, insurance providers, clothing shops, coffee store. I mean, it's just amazing to witness the myriad. The shoes I'm wearing right now are from a great public square business. My tie is from a public square business. If you are looking to unsubscribe from the corrupt system that has tried to convince you that there are 
only a few businesses you have the ability to choose from. And they've tried to convince you to forget small business America. We are here with the opposite message, which is that over 90% of our marketplace today, 50,000 plus vendors are small businesses. They make our country special. They're going to serve your needs with quality at the forefront. And you can know that you're not going to live under the threat of cancellation or under political lecturing in the process. The movement is growing. And I guarantee you too, Tudor, that you will have people after this uh, podcast here, this great show, that will sign up as businesses and uh, say, hey, we want our voice to be heard. We want to join the movement. That's what happens anytime we have media like this. And it's so cool to witness how the businesses are actually seeing a liberating market experience because they're getting to live out their values and let these consumers know they're right. But they're also seeing a lucrative one. Their profits are increasing through their presence on the platform. And that's the sweetest thing of all. So how do you stay in business, though? You must have to bank. You also have an app. How do you stay on the app store? How do you know that that is guaranteed? Because it seems as though the leftists, once they feel threatened, they figure out a way to get you canceled. And now you talked about a social credit score. I'm not sure everybody totally understands what that means and what happens in places like China where you your social credit goes down and that can be for an individual, that can be for a business, but eventually your entire life, you can be stopped from doing anything. And if you think about how much today of our lives are interacting online, I mean, your email is online, you can have your email server taken away, your phone can be shut down essentially, you can be blocked from getting apps. Over time, you can be blocked from banking. All of these things that happen in China could come here. So how do you how do you get around that at your company? I'll, I'll just make a separate point and then we're going to talk specifically about what you know Michael's doing. So one of the ways that we're trying to do it is we also have a fund called 1789 Capital that is trying to finance exactly the kinds of businesses that you're describing. The reason why we had to take public square public though is if you think that we need this new economy, which I know we all agree on, and we know there's demand for it, the foundation of a new economy always has to be an exchange, which is how do buyers and sellers find each other? Public Square is effectively the Amazon for us, okay? And that's the central linchpin of an economy. So he kind of has to be first because we can have a lot of pillow companies and coffee companies, but if they can't find the customer, that's only like one monoline product. Everybody can find everybody on this. We don't need to just shoot Bud Light cans, as funny as that is. We can actually go buy a beer that we like and you can find it on his app. He had an 800% increase on beer after that happened with Bud Light. Um, so what we are going to do simultaneously to taking this company public and then have the people have the opportunity to support it by buying the stock, making it as powerful as some of these other businesses you're talking about is step one. But we actually have to finance an entirely replicated economy simultaneously so that they can't do the types of things you're talking about. So when you're talking about the plumbing of the internet, which you've rightfully pointed out is where we're vulnerable, web hosts, payment processors, all of those things have to have a free speech oriented business that we will finance and start ourselves. We cannot rely on the other side because then we're ceding all of our power. It's exactly why you saw another company more in the speech area called Rumble go public, which is an alternative, as I'm sure you're familiar to YouTube, because YouTube is right. owned by Google, which I hope most people know. And that's why during COVID, you couldn't see any alternate views on what was actually going on during that period of time. And it they were calling it misinformation, but almost all of those things now have come true that they were censoring. And that's a horrifying prospect. Um, and so this is America waking up to Michael's point as just a regular American during COVID, his eyes were open and that's what this was a solution to. So we definitely need to get a lot smarter. It's very important what you're talking about. People need to understand what's going on in China because not only are they our enemy, they want us to live like that. They don't have right. rights in China. I mean. So most people don't even know they don't even have a bill of rights in the United Kingdom. And that's like our closest ally. That's what makes America so special is a bill of rights, emphasis on family and a robust middle class. That's how you have an actual democracy. So think about the things that are being attacked right now. It's the middle class. It's the family. And it's our bill of rights. That's what we have to protect. And that's part of the solution. So I'll turn it over to some of the steps you're taking. Well, you, you asked a great question, which is how are we ourselves staying protected amidst this rather chaotic economic environment where many actors seem to be acting very opposed to us? And I'll say that we're trying to practice what we preach as best as we can by utilizing our own network. What's very cool is that we bank, for example, with a bank that we found on our own platform. Hmm. And so when we had Chase threaten to cancel us, because they were questioning us on our conservative views, 
which actually happened. Uh, we immediately- Jeez, are you seriously? I mean, they really came after that specifically? Our bank called us in the fall of 2021 when we were just getting started. And they asked us, hey, we're a little concerned about this conservative messaging. Can you tell us more about that? We said, absolutely not. You're our financial institution. <laughs> you should not have the, even the authority to ask us that. Uh, you are our, uh, you're our service provider, not the other way around. We don't owe you anything. And so we actually left them. We closed our accounts with them immediately. We found a bank that's on our own app and we utilize that for all of our business banking. We still use them today. Axos Bank, AXOS, they're great. And so we know with the blessed assurance that for so many of the different facets of our business, uh, we're covered because we have people that, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll throw out another name there that's been really great to us. And it's a, an awesome SMS provider that helps us with push notifications and things. They're called Braze. They're a big provider and they're not necessarily with us politically, but they're not against us. And they said, you know what? We actually respect your right to do business and we're proud to partner with you, regardless of your views about things, because we would do the same for the other side. And we want you to know that we're happy to help you. And so there are amazing businesses like that as well, that they maybe necessarily wouldn't be on our platform. But what they would say is that we're not going to cancel you because of your political views. We're glad to have your business. And so what we're really doing, Tudor, is we're shifting the way the economy is working. We're putting money back in the hands of we, the people. We're get, allowing them to have a voice again. And uh, we're doing that because we are those consumers. That's my wife and I, that's Omid and his family. I mean, that's that we're the people that we built this app for. And, um, and I will tell you that thankfully communities around the country are changing one public square business at a time. So you just launched this nationwide nine months ago. Now people are probably saying, okay, how many people, how many vendors could they really have? But you've amassed quite a few vendors in this site. Is that true? Over 50,000. And not only that, uh, we have tripled in growth from January on our daily unique sessions on the platform. So we are seeing a lot of uh, usage uptick over the course of the past few months as the platform continues to grow and evolve and more consumers and businesses are joining. So it's pretty neat to watch the way the, the marketplace is compounding because people feel connected again. They don't feel alone anymore. In fact, there was one lady that reached out recently that said, hey, I feel like I have 6,000 new friends because I am connected to this community in my state that I can really feel proud to stand behind. So that's at the heart of all of this is that we want to feel like we're represented. We don't want to feel alone and we want to know that we're not spending money on abortion when I'm just trying to buy a cup of coffee. And when we can meet other people that have that same desire, it creates a cool network effect. Well, and when I'm on the, well, when I'm on the app, it will say this brand is not supporting your values because, and you should use this brand instead. So how how often is that the case? If somebody's looking for something, does it point out this is why? Or how does that always work? That's a great question. We have what are called buy ditch campaigns. Uh, I am only a fan of a boycott if there's an alternative that you can go to. I'm not a fan of a boycott just for a political move. Uh, I would rather there be action associated with it. That's our stance on these things. And so what we'll do often is if you join the app, if you download it from the App Store or Google Play or you head to publicsq.com, you're going to see on our featured page, which is basically our highest quality content we display to people. It, it shifts by the day and it's great and fresh. You're going to see things called buy ditch campaigns where we'll show you an example of a company that has abused our values and then we'll show you an alternative that you should go to so for example last week we highlighted highlighted tampax that was utilizing dylan mulvaney a biological male to endorse their tampons uh we said you should probably ditch them because it feels like they've lost the narrative here and you should instead go to this company called garnu which is a fantastic company that's on our platform that respects the identity of women and, uh, and wants to know that they're, uh, they're protected. And so we have all different industries where we'll showcase, hey, here's an example you shouldn't go to, but we want to be action oriented. You should go here instead because they're proud to stand with you and your values. They're not going to cancel you. And what's very neat too is that a majority of time, they'll actually give discounts to consumers for shopping there. So you can receive incentive for spending money in alignment with your values. Does anyone know who I Dylan's agent is, by the way? Because I'd love <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. That, that's what we need to know. I mean, think about... Yeah. That alone, when I see that, because obviously I have a bunch of preteen girls in my house, I've got four, four daughters, and that's their market 
It is not the the 25-year-old or the 30-year-old because they're pretty set in their ways by that point. They know what products they use. So their market is these young girls. And when I was a kid, tampon and, and maxi pad commercials that would come on and, and they would kind of explain what it was like to be in the school day and what you needed and how that worked. And now you don't talk about how it works at all because where's Dylan putting it? I mean, he doesn't know how it works. You know, now it's just a fad. And that's not that's not what young girls need, because I see my daughters right now. They have a lot of questions and the brands are not answering those questions. And obviously those questions come from home as well. I mean, mom goes through and talks to them about that. But in some cases, mom's not there. And that means you need to find a vendor that you trust that is going to talk directly to you. But I mean, how did this happen that you have someone like a Dylan Mulvaney coming out and and talking about tampons, but also, I mean, even Nike coming out and kind of making a mockery of women saying, oh, I'm working out, but it's it's not a workout. And certainly there's no need for support there on a sports bra. So what are they saying to their clientele? And, and how many, how has that driven people to you? Because you talked about Bud Light too. You talked about beer suddenly going wild on your site after Bud Light. So how do you think that's affecting the majority of consumers? Because if we're listening to what people are saying on the news, I mean, if you're listening to Chuck Todd, everybody loves this stuff and we have to continue it. But it seems as though the silent folks are saying, I'd rather buy from someone who gets what I need. When the um, framers were working on our foundational documents in this country, they worried about what was called tyranny of the majority. What we have now is tyranny of the minority. So exactly the opposite of what they thought was going to happen has happened here. Uh, We have a small, uh, very vocal class of people that are trying to dramatically change culture for the worse. And it is not adopted by most people. And we have to ask ourselves where these kind of moral panics are coming from. So I think a lot about these issues and talk about them. So I, I do have a view. I think what you're describing these corporations doing, just like you're seeing at the university level, is a form of indoctrination. Um, It's not as innocent as just having somebody there who's easy to lampoon. There's something much more serious and sinister going on. And I think it goes back uh, to one of the attacks on the three prongs I mentioned, which is that of family. Every authoritarian movement that wants government dependence has to first dismantle the family. And so these kinds of movements are meant to disrupt the nuclear family, which is Uh, just like the middle class, a bulwark against authoritarianism. So that is why this is happening. It is being done at the behest of certain folks that don't share the values we're talking about at the top that have a lot of power. But it's also being done by our explicit enemies like the Chinese Communist Party. So, for example, look at a product like TikTok. It is absolutely pathetic that as a country we don't have the fortitude to ban that. It is a digital Trojan horse that's been sent in here as kind of a modern day opium war against the United States as revenge for what we did to them several hundred years ago. What it is doing is promoting these kinds of things to young, impressionable children. And at the same time, the app at home in China shuts off after a few hours so they can't be on it all day and teaches them math and science. Here, they're telling our children to do dangerous challenges that can be life threatening It encourages them to engage in horrible behavior that they then save on Chinese servers to potentially use as blackmail when they get earlier, uh, uh, you know, older. And then what we just talked about with some of these perverted things they're pushing on young impressionable kids. I would just say that the CIA does not have a monopoly on sectarian violence abroad. Other people can figure out how to cause issues in our country, too. And they're doing that at the family level. Why are we so afraid, though, of coming out and saying this? I mean, I heard a young conservative just earlier today on the news come out and say, I, you know, I'm doing I'm working for, I don't know, one of the big conservative networks for for the political world. And they asked him, well, what do you think about the ban on on TikTok? And he said, well, I mean, right now we just have conservatives who aren't on TikTok and Democrats are doing a great job of reaching kids there. And I think that we need we need to be there. How do you how do you, first of all, get across to adult lawmakers? But then 
battle it when adult lawmakers don't see the need for national security. I mean, really, I have talked to people about the threat of China and, and it's as if they just have no idea that there is a, a superpower out there that is a danger to us. And really, I say that because they now have the largest Navy in the world. They are a powerhouse when it comes to manufacturing and shipping and making a ton of money off of other countries. They've overtaken us in both of those areas. And it seems as though we're just acting like, oh, Hum, what could possibly happen to us? Oh, oh, look at that balloon that just floated by. How sweet. I mean, we are, we are not taking this seriously. So how do we convince people? You have got to be smart consumers and go to places that are going to protect not only your interests, not only your family, but the national interest, national security. It's, I'm going to turn over to Michael on the specific solution there because it's such a good framing. We talked about liberty at the beginning, but this has now become a national security issue. Um, when was the last time a major Hollywood picture depicted the Chinese in a negative way? Hmm. I don't think anybody in this room can think of one. And I'll tell you, it was about 2001 with a movie called Red Corner starring Richard Gere. Richard Gere doesn't have a career anymore in Hollywood and major production companies because he's anti-China. They have bought off our culture. So we like to say that politics is downstream from culture. The reason that most Americans don't know any of this, it's not like when I grew up watching Rocky IV or Rambo, I knew the Soviets were a problem. And we used right. on that because Hollywood at that point was actually acting in the interest of our country. Now, Hollywood, academia, and other indoctrination centers have been completely bought off by the Chinese Communist Party because they knew that our allegiance to money is more important than anything else. So we have to have you've got LeBron James supporting them. Yeah, which and he, he talks a lot about the injustices of slavery. There is modern day slavery going on there right now, making our products. And they're silent on that because, again, the NBA is by and large a co-opted organization by the Chinese Communist Party as well. So we have to change the policies at the top level federally to say that there are penalties and sanctions against doing business with a foreign power the same way we have the same sanctions on Russia. You couldn't think of a multinational company during the Cold War doing business with the Soviet Union. But that's what's right. happening right now. That's the analogy. We need to continue to hammer it home and put pressure on our politicians who are probably brought off. So that that really goes to the fact that this is in our music. This is in our news. It's in all of the TV that we watch. It's in all of the movies. Or, or as you're pointing out, I mean, it's lacking there. The warning is not there. The embracing is there. The warning is not there. Whereas it used to be that you had Hollywood on board with national security. And now it seems like that has gone by the wayside. So does Public Square at some point have its own Netflix? How do we... We've seen conservatives try to enter that space. It just doesn't work. How do we get there? Well, I think that part of the most effective way to getting there is recognizing our unique placement in the market and nailing it before we scale it. I think sometimes we can desire to boil the ocean and <laughs> we'll get lost in this, this facade that, you know what, I can't change anything until I change everything. And it's like, that's actually not the way forward. The way forward is by picking one thing, crushing it at that, showcasing that as an example of what could be. So then the 1789 capitals of the world and the banks of the world start to rally around those examples of really well-executed, mission-driven companies that are vital to the national interest. And then that carries over into industry after industry after industry. We have a lot of people, too, that reach out and they say, well, you know what? I still have an iPhone. Like, we still drive their cars. Like, they just own and control too much. We're never going to win. So what's the point of even trying? And my rebuttal is very simple. It took the authoritarians in our country decades to build this woke corporatist society we live in now. So it's going to take time to reverse it too, but it'll never start unless we start somewhere. And uh, so for us, we believe that the solution is let's beat Amazon. Let's create a shopping experience that is well-resourced, well-capitalized, and excellent in execution. Let's build on it. Let's hear the needs of our consumers and make sure that we're providing real value. Let's have it be a cultural movement, not just a political one. So Tudor, we have country music stars, action, action sports athletes, major entertainers that are rallying around this marketplace because it's so much bigger than just politics. It is truly vital to our way of life as Americans. Let's nail that. Absolutely. Then let's let Public Square be an example. Let's let it be an example to the entertainment industry. Let's let it be an example to music and to finance. And uh, we believe that ultimately a rising tide will lift all ships. 
And uh, we hope that this this tide of patriotism will be one that really starts with us. We believe we're at the forefront of something, but we believe we are so early. I have a generational outlook on this, and I think that's how we need to win. China has a generational outlook on the future. They think of things in centuries, not just minutes like we do in the United right. States. Right, not eight years. Exactly. We have to change that if we want to win. They were... They entered the WTO in 2000, 2001. So, you know, we're 22 years into this failed experiment uh, and we're looking at things based on an election cycle. Look, we could all be doing other things. Uh, you know, it's not typical for a Wall Street person like me to put himself out there. I'm doing it because I want what's best for my daughter, my family. You have to do this. Otherwise, our way of life is going to go. So we're at the top of the first. So people can say, oh, well, what about this or that? This is right now the way I like to equate it, the way the ESG fraud started in 2011 and became a multi-trillion dollar scam. We're actually doing something that's not just a marketing scam the way ESG is, and we can be trillions of dollars if we all just come together. People need to come together, work together, and we have to start somewhere. And I think we're providing literally the most elegant solution you could possibly think of to start the movement, which is, are you sick of giving your money to people that hate you? Yes or no? Right, yeah. You want to give money to people that like you. Sounds pretty obvious to me. And if you are, if you are, and you wanted to then go off and build the net, the next Netflix for conservatives or something, you go to Public Square and you find a bank that's going to help you, right? Exactly. You can find all that stuff. So that's why, as, you, as you're pointing out, it, it's the perfect solution. We just need people to take that first step. And what's great about it is we're not asking for anyone to spend more money than they're already spending. So it's already money that you're throwing away to help someone that's hurting you. So take that same dollar and put it to something that's positive. It's like, to me, the easiest decision you could possibly make. Well, tell our listeners where they go, how they find Public Square, what they should do to help spread the word, everything. We'd be happy to. Thanks so much for having us on. You can head to publicsq.com to get started. So whether you're a consumer or a business and you're looking to join, it's totally free to sign up. We're never going to ask you for money. You can join at publicsq.com for a business or a consumer. That's also where you'll find links to the App Store or, or to Google Play. So that's kind of our single source of truth. Best first step. And then obviously you can learn more about Columbia. Uh, yeah, we're best. CLBR on the New York Stock Exchange. And you can read all about us in this transaction that's happening uh, if you're interested in supporting. It was great to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael Seifert, Omid Malik. Thank you so much for being on today. We appreciate it. And we wish you the best of luck with Public Square. I will be on there today trying to find an actual suit that I can wear. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you all for joining me on the Tudor Dixon podcast for this episode and others. Go to TudorDixonPodcast.com. You can subscribe right there or go to Apple Podcasts, the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Join us next time on the Tudor Dixon podcast and have an awesome day.